large is sailing into your living room in the Ultimate Collector Series form. F1 is partnering with LEGO for a excellent 2025, and the LEGO business cards are disappearing. That and much, much more on this week's Breaking News. But first, I want to talk about a really cool store, a Brick Monarch Shop. This website is designed for all those AFOLs out there that are looking for some great t-shirts with classic logos, some home decor you can put on your walls, such as shields, and some other great iconic aspects from the LEGO history. You can head over to the link in our description for Brick Monarch Shop and you can get a discount of 10% off using Back to Brick 10. That's Back to Brick 10, the number two. So head over there so you can get some really cool AFL swag. All right, now let's get to the breaking news. Lego. 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 Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Hey everybody, welcome back to Back to Brick. I'm your host Garrett, and this is the podcast where we talk with fellow AFOLs about their love of Lego, and we get down to the breaking news to talk about all things Lego has been up to for the past week in the news. So thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. As always, if you're new, thank you for joining us. And if you are a longtime listener, I appreciate you continue to come back and listen to the podcast. Make sure you subscribe to this as well as the YouTube channel on your favorite podcast listening apps and over at YouTube. I always want to thank my patrons that are behind the scenes supporters where they get the episode early, no ads, and get to see and have a great community effort together with Lego. Belfont Brick Studio, Franco Portelli, Jimmy Tucker, Ryan S., David Matthew Vander Bogart, Paul Snellen, Lee Jackson, and Pops Block Shop. Thank you so much for supporting this as well as the Back to Brick brand. Now we will be jumping into the news here, and I'm very excited to kind of talk about some of the things that I'm working on here. One already is that I'm uh, the Lego Ideas Oscillating Fan Project that I would love if you could go support. We're approaching 800. It's been slow. I haven't been keeping up with it as much as I should, because I'm really trying to go towards the YouTube effort. I think that it's definitely the future of this, as well as having a podcast that I'm going to put on video. I am actually recording this one and working through trying to get it done. It's definitely harder than you'd expect, since it has to be done within a 12 to 24 hour period. And yeah, just finding the time and effort does take a little bit, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. Having to update my quality as well as I've purchased a lot of new equipment and some things to help make the studio a little bit more of what I'm looking to do. Other than that, I have still been working on a commission and just trying to get through maybe having another job offer. Who knows? I mean, the the world is just a weird place for me and my wife and we get through it and we have everything, I mean, we're booked up every weekend through to October and maybe even through October. So yeah, it's it's definitely a struggle to get through. But guess what? It, it's life. That's just how things go. And stay tuned for a special episode this Monday for Back to Brick. This one is going to be an interview with the creator of The Brickery. It's a cafe where you can buy a small treat and get a Lego set to rent and build it while you're enjoying your coffee or your... Um, a, sweet or whatever that you'd like and it's really cool it's the first in the united states like this um and it's got so many other cool features that i think if you're in the area in kentucky i definitely recommend you go visit or if not go visit anyways but stay tuned for monday that's when the episode will drop it'll drop here on youtube as well as a podcast episode so you can listen or watch and listen and enjoy learning about this cafe i will be doing our set reviews at the end of the episode the first set is 60367 passing your plane and the rubricable mock is going to be the modular haunted mansion from ben builds lego so those will be fun discussions to have and i'm excited to get into the news today so let's jump into it with this week's breaking news first bit of news is we're going to talk about the imperial dropship and rebel scout speeder this is the 383 piece set and it'll come at 40 dollars. and it's the last of the 20th anniversary celebration sets where we actually will get the pink Astro Droid Q2 QTKT. It comes with three stormtroopers and three rebels. So this set is uh, right at the end here as we get the collectible minifigure, and we're gonna see uh, kind of the addition to the battle packs that we've gotten before. So you get this figure as well as having uh, those extra troopers and rebels to build out your fleet. Now, the next bit of news is something that we've all been looking forward to, and we had no idea this was coming, was the Ultimate Collector Series Jabba Sailing Barge. Now, with the leak that happened a little over a year ago, 
this was already out there. So we all saw, oh, not all of us, but if you saw the images, it looks pretty much the exact same as what we'd expect. It's 3,942 pieces and will come at a cost of $500. It does have 11 minifigures. I'll run through the list here. We've got Jabba the Hutt, Princess Leia in her um, bikini outfit with a new printed waist piece, the uh, Bib Fortuna, C-3PO, Max Rebo, which is, uh, everybody wants Max Rebo, uh, Kid Haba, uh, Veshma, Woof, uh, Gwamar Guamarin, Guamarian Guard, and the Saskum Crumb and R2-D2 with his bar tool, uh, bar table accessories. Uh, it does have five different rooms. We've got a front section, which is the cockpit. We have a prisoner cell, the armory, a kitchen, an entertainment room, uh, which includes Jabba's bed. Now, these are um, rooms that well, n not everyone expected. We definitely expected the palace or the, uh, the throne room, I guess, for Java. And it does have little panels that open up. But there also is a kitchen, which is the second time we've seen a large skill set have a kitchen, uh, like uh, the Better Do set. And he, yeah, I mean, at $500, it's not cheap. And you will get a gift with purchase, which we'll talk about in a second here. But at f almost four thousand a thousand pieces missing and no sarlacc pit and no uh, sand speeder to it it's definitely a little bit lacking in some things it does look great i have the original from way back when and this they've done a total of two prior to this and an ultimate collector's one it's rather big it's got some great detail to it so if you don't have any of this uh uh, sailing barge. This is a great one to have. At $500, maybe we'll see a discount. I don't know. It's one of the larger mid-scale sets that we've seen, and it just... Uh, I think people will want to have it, so it could be a little bit popular. The gift with purchase is going to be Luke's lightsaber, which is... This is the third lightsaber we've had as a gift with purchase. We had Yoda's. We had... Uh, Luke, Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker's. It's 145 pieces and there isn't really anything exclusive other than the nameplate that comes with it. But because people will get it as a gift of purchase, it's probably going to be worth $100 because you have to spend $500 already. So people are going to, of course, resell it. Um, and yeah, I mean, the other one you had to get was the ATAT, -AT, And I can't remember what you had to get for Yoda's. You can collect them if you like all the lightsabers. It, personally, I think the aftermarket or the other designers that have like on brick vault have better lightsabers so this is just more of the collector piece our next news is really really um something that i think all of us saw coming to happen soon enough but lego will be working with f1 to have a partnership in 2025 now this is not just going to be the basic sets that we've seen already with a bunch of their technic lines and speed champions but we're also going to get a duplo which is new and maybe collectible minifigures in an interesting way that we talked about last week where it'll just be the heads of special designers and maybe some teams now quoted from the article uh, talking from the management and teams that are working in the partnership activities are going to come in 2025 which will include a focus on bringing fans closer to the world of innovation technology and engineering through the fun of lego building with in-person activities at races and products that celebrate the sports engineering and technical heritage emily praiser chief com uh, commercial officer of formula one said the lego brick has in ignited a spark of creativity and passion for building in millions of children and adults around the globe Hello. Why not do it with F1? It's be the largest sport in the world. Well, that's not true. Let me let me take that back. I take that back. It's one of the upcoming largest sports in the world, and a lot of people are very interested. A lot of money is invested in that, and having Lego continue to do this as they've done with Ferrari and others, uh, it's just another fun partnership that we're going to get a lot of interesting f1 cars out of it maybe we'll even get a nice remote control one they need to do more of those i know that they're expensive with the motors but it's definitely something i think people would be interested in lego is increasing their resilience in their production line we've seen that there's high demand for a lot of things and we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing by adding uh, more stability, I'd say. Well, we've already seen that they're building two plants, one in Virginia and one for Vietnam for those growing things. They're in introducing more resilience as for 
um, efficiencies, not only with them, but others that are in support of Lego. The factory in Mexico has been a little on the edge, so they're, they're trying to fix that. They're just growing. I mean, Lego is continuing to grow, so building this resilience into their product line maybe impact uh, a better shipping as well as quality of production where we don't have missing bricks, because that does happen too. Dungeons & Dragons minifigures is the latest collectible minifigure series, and it's extremely popular. We've seen a lot of the stores at LEGO be sold out of them, but also it's the number one toy right now on Amazon. So if you haven't gotten them already, you can go and get them somewhere else. Just kidding. Uh, they're definitely not sold out everywhere, but Amazon has marked them as one of the number one toys because the D&D community is so big, and I mean, the minifigures themselves are really unique. I haven't purchased any yet, but I definitely want to get the series because of just the detailing that they've done and the effort that they put into this for fans, as well as having your ability to play and gameplay with them. And I mean, it's a very creative, mystical, mythic style that kids probably love as well, since Lego is a kid's brand as well as adults now more so than, well, ever. Lego employees used to have business cards, well, some of them still do at this point, that are minifigures, where they're just basic minifigures with a white chest piece where they have their names printed on them. And when we went to the Lego Insiders tour, they had these and they handed them out for uh, kind of their business cards, like, hey, this is who you met. Uh, well, it's going away. Lego is looking to change that. They're talking about continue to make them available to all colleagues who are already connected digitally has been a sustainability and com complexity of company resources. They print minifigures all the time, so I don't really understand where that comes from, but it looks like they're just going to get rid of them altogether and keep them exclusive just for executives and special people to have them. And some people are really upset who are collectors. There are a bunch of collectors in Europe as well as, uh, I don't know, specifically in the United States, there are some. I have a couple, but I didn't know people collected them. And so this market's going to kind of crash for them to be able to do that. But they are cool figures, and it kind of sucks for the employees that they won't get a minifigure with their name on it to be their business card. A woman, Sharon Vance, is a builder of Lego, and she switched from painting because ALS has impacted her mobility, and it, it, hasn't, it hasn't helped her continue in her creative aspect. She's been working in Michigan to continue creating, and using Lego has made it even more accessible and given her the ability to continue to do so. Lego is, as she said, Lego is a great to use because I, am, uh, I can lay it out on the floor and then just work as long as I want, instead of having to stand up, do paintings and different things she can paint on the floor with Lego. So that's really cool. As we've talked about many, many times, Lego is accessible and given to people all over that can continue in having that creative aspect that they want. Funko Pops are very popular. We already saw that Brickheads have become popular over the past years, and Funko Pops have not stopped. They're very collectible. There's so many things that you, the company has done with them, and they've created a game that is very much akin to the LEGO Jurassic World uh, builds, and or games, excuse me. And the games themselves for Funko Pop is, you know, a giant T-Rex head with a small body, and there's some differences, though, even though it is kind of similar. The storyline is nowhere near what the uh, first uh, Jurassic World Lego game was, where it goes from uh, the first movie through the fourth. This is kind of all over the place with integrations from those movies and different aspects, of course, that they're Funko figures, not minifigures, and it's not as comedic. So there's a little bit of backlash, but it's Funko Pop, so it's a little bit different, and Lego's already kind of taken that with Brickhead, so it's kind of an extension of that, and I get, it gives them the freedom to continue to create. Fortnite is continuing to be a great investment for LEGO, and they're continuing to expand with their Isles and Islands expansion. And there's quite a few that people are definitely interested in, and if you go online, you're going to find a bunch of different ways that it'll help you get to those areas. One is the Pirate Town, which will give you the chance for a flint knock, uh, flint knock pistol, pirate musket, and boom shield. So those are different things that people are interested in getting. There's a tropical treasure uh, pass that gives you a cool islandy skin with some cool uh, details on it and a bunch of other things. So people can continue to travel on the buses to see some of these cool areas and it will continue to expand with different updates. So look out for continued updates to have uh, new aspects of Fortnite that you can definitely engage with. 
Rebuild the Galaxy has been an impressive and great feat for LEGO as they did a premiere with a bunch of the LEGO influencers being a part of that and uh, seeing these fun stories being rebuilt in a galaxy that's definitely different. I'm still going to be probably doing that this uh, next week so you can tune in to me watching that. Um, and seeing my reactions to it. But the creators came out and they talked about their interactions with Disney and the creation. They were given pretty much creative freedom to build. Uh, Benji, Samuel, and Herman Hernandez, uh, the creators of the show, talk about uh, how they interacted with Disney and continue with Lego Star Wars. Read a little excerpt of what they said in their latest interview. They detail the creative liberties. Uh, we never had any limitations on what we wanted to do. I think we don't, we didn't want to write anything that went too far. There's that balance. I mean, we love every element of Star Wars that has been done before, and we're uh, coming at it with fans saying, yeah, it's Lego, you poke your fu uh, playful fun, but it's also coming from a place of love. And that's how we approach, uh, approached it here, and I think everyone at Lucasfilm saw that. So that's uh, a wonderful way to integrate Lego as well as Star Wars and having that fan service that everyone wanted, not only from the Star Wars, but the Lego community as well, which leads into some of the Easter eggs that people saw in the show, which I'll note. I haven't, as I said before, I haven't seen it yet, but these are really cool Easter eggs and getting to learn about them before the show, I think is pretty uh, fun uh, way to maybe look out for them as I'm watching. The first one is they talked about the initial draft for Ewoks, which were going to be just as big as Wookiees, uh, fighting off the Empire. So I think they split them and did the Wookiees and Ewoks. Maybe they're related. I, I actually don't know. I guess I'd have to ask George Lucas on that point. We do have people, uh, the second one, we do have our famous voice actors coming back to voice some of our favorite characters. Sam Witwer came back as Maul, Kit Fisto uh, as Mace Windu, and Phil Lamar as T.C. Carson. So that's pretty cool having those people come back and engage and having these cool roles. Did they get paid probably pretty well to do voiceover? Of course. Voiceover is the cash money grab for any actor. Another one is Jar Jar Sith is Darth Jar Jar, which is... Um, been a fan uh, idea and kind of hint because he kind of pretty much set up the Galactic Empire by voting uh, when Senator Palpatine wanted to create the Empire. So yeah, uh, that's pretty funny. Then there was the chessboard that we all know from uh, the New Hope, uh, Dejeric, and the battle droids uh, actually get to play around, which is really funny to see that in Lego form. We get a really cool astro droid in the um, cantina. It's the LSGO. Wonder what that spells. Maybe Lego? Uh, and it actually was colored in the Lego red, white, and uh, yellow coloring. And then we also get Gribo as the first one that has shot as who fired first. And uh, Han Solo was no more in this galaxy, and he had a loving relationship with Leia Organa instead. That's I think that's a really funny twist, seeing that there's so much like who actually shot first because different variants of the Star Wars films, it definitely changes. So if you haven't watched it yet, I'd recommend you go watch it over on Disney Plus and enjoy Star Wars Galaxy as they continue to expand into the Lego galaxy. A new set is coming out a little earlier than the first. This is the Pharrell Williams set, the Over the Moon with Pharrell Williams. It's 966 pieces, and it'll come at a cost of $110. And it's a very interesting build. Uh, I, I don't really know how to play in the context of the film. And it's got a lot of minifigure heads to, I guess, change the body and do different things with it. I mean, it's a little expensive. It's going to be a collector's item because it's from a Lego movie that is just kind of not aligned with the Lego movies, and it's more of the biopic of it. Well, it actually came out today. As Lego continues to change from the first to the third to this one's the 20th, they did this for the uh, Star Wars book as well, and I think they're testing out to see when people actually come into the stores and buy, instead of just having one big day on the first and then probably lackluster sales in the rest of the month, they're spreading it out. I get it as a, a corporation thing. It's just weird for us as fans to go multiple times just to see these different things. There are some rumors coming out for some of the different sets, one for the Icons sets. And it seems that we're gonna get something that we haven't seen in a long time. Reductions in price for Lego sets. That doesn't happen. Uh, we see a lot of the sets that have um, lower pieces continue to get increased prices. Like 
Icons and Ideas had jumped in price before, and now it looks like we're going to get some sets that are 750 pieces for $50 and 1300 uh, piece sets for $90. Maybe they have sets that are more generic pieces instead of uh, the specialty pieces so they can lower those prices. I guess we'll have to see come 2025. Minecraft rumors, we're getting at least three. I'm not sure exactly what they are, but the rumor is that they're similar to the Skeleton Dungeon and Enders uh, are the Ender Dragon sets as they continue to just find new ways to integrate the Minecraft sets because they continue to change them up as they can because Minecraft is buildable, and but there's some specific characters everybody does want. Another rumor is the modular set. There's one that comes out every year and it usually comes out on January 1st. This past year was December 1st. It looks like they're trying to get some more sales and I'm guessing we're gonna see it for December 1st again this year. But it's gonna be, it's probably gonna be a corner lot at $230, which is similar to what we saw in the corner lot for the boutique hotel. But it's gonna be over 3,000 pieces, which is the third largest set compared to the museum and the town square. So are we getting a skyscraper or are we getting something really, really detailed uh, with brickwork? Who knows? I, I expect we'll see that probably sometime in mid-November towards the release date of December 1st. The Bricklink Designer Program Series 6 is open for submission. Through September 27th, you can submit your idea to the Bricklink Program to see if you can get it selected as a official Lego set. Well, Bricklink set, which Lego owns. Either way, you can submit that, and you can't do it a modular, though. It can't be a modular set. It can be something else alongside that, just not that specific one. And then voting will open on October 7th through the 18th, and I already have one that I've finished and have, well, will be submitting this weekend, and I have another one in the works, fingers crossed. We'll see if I can actually finish it. The last one I did as the gas station, Apocalypse Gas Station, well... Hold on, I gotta get a brick separator. I'll be right back. Hey artists, ever feel like you're navigating your career alone? I'm Adam Botsford, and in my new podcast, That Wonderful State, I'm sharing an inside look at art and business. I'm also bringing in artists from all walks of life to share their stories, advice, and lessons learned. In these interviews, I ask artists ranging from published illustrators to gallery experts to share their know-how in direct layman terms. Whether you're just starting out or deep in the hustle, That Wonderful State is here to help you bypass the gatekeeping and get a look at things from the inside. So grab your coffee and a sketchbook and let's figure this out together. Subscribe to That Wonderful State wherever you get your podcasts and keep being amazing. You can't do, uh, yeah, you can't do fuel either. It has to be a renewable resource or something not specifically aligned to fuel, which, um, Sure, part of their sustainability, but I, I don't think... I'm going to try to submit it, but I doubt that it'll be accepted just based on that fact. Lego sets are retiring as every year this happens, and right around October is probably the last time that you're going to be able to get a lot of these sets. And then November for the uh, Black Friday sales, same thing. In the United States, we're getting over 100 sets retiring, some large sets, some smaller sets, and in the UK, actually 111 sets. I guess the 11 that are still in the United States, we have either a large quantity of them or they're very popular here, so they're not going to retire them. So if there are sets that you want, I definitely recommend you look up the retirement sets list over at uh, Brick Fanatics or the Brick Fan just to see that list and see which ones you might want to get before they retire for, um, well, ever and well actually not forever some come back but not likely then you can get them on the third parking market for probably a 15 percent increase as it continues to climb there are some star wars rumors for 2025 already there are three sets that uh, we are just getting news about because we got a lot of them before um, such as the arc wing and uh, other ones but this one could bring back the helmet series which we haven't seen for a little bit and we could get boba fett's helmet which isn't a huge and like we already had Django fett so this one's probably just going to be a color change to it and maybe using some silver pieces which would be nice um, we will get a buildable chopper which uh, kind of goes along the lines of, of the most popular droids that we've seen for star wars so that's also not a surprise and we're getting the star wars logo which 
I don't know how they're going to do it. It's not going to be super detailed. It's just going to be the Star Wars logo, maybe with some stars. But it'll be good to hang over your section that you love and for your Star Wars collection. So that's going to be, I think it's a rumored at $80, but that'll come out probably sometime in the beginning of the year before May the 1st. I'd expect it probably at January or February. Minifigure series 27. We're at 27 collectible minifigure series. We just had the Dungeons and Dragons, and this one is going to go back to the similar way that they've done it with some creative figures. They already have kind of the list out, so I'm going to read through them so you can see what we're expecting probably in uh, October, November timeframe. We're going to get the Wolfpack, Beastmaster, Pirate Quartermaster, Steampunk Inventor, the uh, Pterodactyl Costume Fan, the Boogeyman, Jetpack Racer, Cat Lover, Longboard, Astro, uh, Astronomer Kid, Cupid, Hamster Costume Fan, and Plush Toy. Uh, well, I like the Cat Lover because uh, I am um, uh, a crazy cat man with uh, just a cat and a dog. And uh, if you know anything in the United States, that's just a funny inside joke there. But then we do have some other uh, great classics, as we talked about the Pirates and Wolfpack getting those. Uh, Boogeyman could be cool for the Halloween season, so likely to see those sometime in October time frame. Wednesday already had two sets come out, and they came out with another one. This is the Wednesday Brickheads. It comes with Wednesday, of course, and Enid. And when e- uh, Wednesday is in her uh, classic uh, black dress, and Enid is in her very colorful style. So those are very uh, fun to continue your collection of brickheads. It is Batman Day, and that means we're celebrating the 85th anniversary of Batman. And there's going to be some special things you can get over at the Insiders Reward Center, as well as um, a gift of purchase. If you spend $40 or more on Bat- uh, DC, you will get the poly bag of Batman standing on like uh, the gargoyle at the corner of a, a building. And on the Insiders program, there's an 85th anniversary poster celebrating Batman. That's 3,000 Insiders points. So you can go and get that if you're a huge Batman fan and have this fun collection as they're going to be releasing the new Batmobile on October 1st um, to celebrate the 1955 television series, which I'm still doing my brick by brick challenge for the Batmobile. We're almost uh, to 100 pieces left. So check that out on YouTube and support. It's going to be really fun as I'm continuing to wind down almost three months left, which is crazy. This is the longest video series and videos I've ever done. And I hope you appreciate some of the facts because I'm learning a lot about Batman and the Batmobile. No more instructions that could be in our future here. Lego's doing an insider's survey to see if we still use our printed Lego instructions. Um, The survey is seeing if we can uh, help in their sustainability project because they're trying to reduce their waste. And that's a lot of paper to print all those uh, because a lot of people might use their iPads or phones to scroll through or their computers, which uh, is interesting. Um, But I'll read a little excerpt of what they said here first. Uh, sustainable building help us decide the future of lego building instructions we want to play our part in building a sustainable future for generations to come one way we can do this is by reducing our paper usage by switching to digital building instructions it's a small change that can make a big difference and we'd love to know how you feel about it let us know by taking this quick survey personally i love my instructions I don't use them after I'm done with them because I just go and search online to find the digital ones. But right now I'm building the Hocus Pocus set and I'm using the instructions because I can set it down and it's not going to deplete in charge and I can flip through. But, you know, on other instructions you can zoom in. But I mean, on these ones you can just zoom your face in to see them. Uh, and, And maybe they can reduce the page count instead. Who knows? Either way. Go over to vote on or see that survey and cast your vote or what you feel about this if you want to keep your instructions or not. And our final bit of news is rumors for the Champions series where we're going to get about 15 next year, which is a lot. And I'm pretty sure the reason is we're going to be partnering with F1. Now, the F1 community is continuing to grow with these special sets, which we've already seen in Speed Champions before, uh, but likely to see a lot more and specifically for some of the teams and different drivers that we know and follow if you're a big F1 fan. 
And that's all our breaking news this week. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast and the YouTube video here. Please make sure to check back in next week and join in as we continue to learn about breaking news. Now, we will have a special episode next week where we're going to be talking with the Brick Cafe, where it's the first Lego cafe where you can build uh, Lego sets and get a, a small treat. And it's really cool. It's in Kentucky. We'll talk with the owner of it and the creator. And so that'll be coming out on Monday. So stay tuned on Monday for a special Lego episode here at Back to Brick. Now moving on to our set reviews. This one is gonna be set 60367, the passenger airplane. It's a seven plus set at 913 pieces and you'll get 780 insiders points for it. It does have a rating from 37 people at four and a half stars. Now this uh, I believe will be one of the retiring sets this year. So definitely get this if you need an aircraft for your city line. And it's $120. It's a little steep. I, I know at 900 pieces and $120, but it's most likely because of the fuselage of the aircraft and those are large pieces and definitely some areas that uh, are hard to manufacture specialty because they're not going to use anything other than this for an aircraft. There's a lot of different cre uh, creatures. There's a lot of different features to this build where you've got the cockpit that can open up, see the pilots, you can see the passengers inside as well as there's a cargo section that lifts up in the back. The engines look really nice, classic, uh, like a 737, but not because they have a split tail system, which I actually don't know of any commercial aircraft that has that. There's a lifting uh, loader where it can lift up the cargo and slide it into the aircraft. There's a baggage car, so your baggage can go uh, into it and it's got the standard open compartment style to it. There's a transport vehicle, which looks to be an electric vehicle that people can, all the passengers can get in. Well, maybe not all, maybe three or four probably two can get in and drive away. And then there's a towing vehicle where it backs up into uh, the plane and pushes away from the gate and gets it ready to go, which no airplane can do that other than I think there was like one that could reverse the thrust. Anyways, uh, there's a plethora of minifigures. We've got uh, at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten minifigures to this. So that's pretty cool. And if you don't have an aircraft part of your uh, city, definitely something I'd consider because this is one of the better ones that I've seen and you get some really fun details that you can build with it. Having it a seven plus set, my um, nephew loves air airplanes. So this could be something we could get him for Christmas, though it's, it is a little expensive, but you can find an affiliate link in the description so you can go and purchase that and have that uh, to integrate an airport into your city sets. Now we'll move on to our rubricable review. This is the modular haunted mansion. Now, if you know of the haunted mansion, this is specifically from Disney. Uh, excuse, yes, yes. But there are two Disney world and Disneyland. Uh, well, there are a lot there. Every park has a haunted mansion. Let me just specify. This one is specifically from Disney World in Orlando, Florida, and it's going to cost $15 for the PDF instructions. And it's by Ben Builds Lego. It's got a bunch of other really fun builds. So you can go check that out as the link in the description over at Rubricable. What is unique about the one in Disney World is it's a corner lot. So there's a door that you go into the corner section uh, with some really great w uh, details of brick structure. And it has a, um, what would you say? Like an, it's not an atrium. It's uh, a greenhouse section to it. Um, and th they did a, he did a beautiful job with the style of the brick as well as the stone structure on either end. It does open up and modular inside. It's got uh, three different levels. They're not filled with anything. So that gives you the opportunity to design whatever you want to fill it with either the dining room or the uh, expanding uh, foyer area. And for any Disney fans, that's pretty fun. And having this uh, be part of a modular, which means it fits into the modular builds, you can add this to those sets. Uh, they've done other modulars before, like at the Disney store using the Disney castle and a lot of options there. So highly recommend going to get this. The, I mean, $15 for something like this, it's 2000 and 998 pieces and they've continued to expand it it's going to be more but definitely a really fun build modular sets are really cool and especially ones like disney because well i'm a disney adult and it's uh, definitely something i would add to my modular set thank you all for tuning in and i will see you next time i'll leave you as i always do get creative get out there and go build something